All right, let's talk about what Derrick Henry brings to the Baltimore Ravens. You know, a lot of speculated on, uh, well, what can he bring to the table? And I think a lot of people have kind of said, isn't he kind of washed up? Uh, I do think it's fair to say I don't think Henry's quite what he once was. I also think it's fair to say he might still be the best running back in football, or at least like up there with the best running backs in football. He was just like, he's kind of no longer just so far ahead of the field, but he's still really good. And again, who knows how many years left he has. That's to me the bigger concern, but let's talk about what he did in what was the last game he played last season, this one. First, I'm going to bring your attention to the player I've circled on screen. That Tennessee Titans uh, interior defensive lineman, watch what he's going to do. Look at how when this play begins, you see that right here, there is, you know, uh, he's getting kind of, uh, the skirt circle blocked it off a little bit, but the player who's blocking him uh, is kind of pushing him up closer towards the top of the screen, which is where Henry wanted to initially go. So Henry initially wanted to go kind of towards the left of the player that I have circled in black, but now realizes he can't really do that. So watch how he adjusts, because I think what really is so underrated with Henry is his vision. Watch how he kind of uh, pretends as though he's going towards his right, but then still goes towards the left, jukes him out a little bit, and is able to turn what would have been maybe just a gain of like one or maybe even tackled at the line of scrimmage into a 10-yard gain. There's huge value in something like that. Again, we all love to have the running back value conversation and how much does it matter. Well, for an elite back, it does matter. For an elite back, even the most hardcore analytics people will say yes, Getting a guy like Henry is great, and to me, again, this is part of why I'm like, don't draft a running back in the first round. You can get like a Derrick Henry type guy, uh, just you know, f for the Ravens for 10 million a year, which kind of feels like a bit of a steal in my opinion. Because of course, with Henry, the value isn't just what he does in the running game; it's also what he does in the passing game. And I don't mean as a receiver; I mean when he's you know not even touching the football, like something like this. What's going to happen is it's going to be a you know. Uh, passing play. They're going to have a receiver run around towards the, you know, bottom of the screen. So, okay, well, what is Henry's uh, value? Oh, I know. It's going to be some hard play action, get guys out of position. No, not even a play action. There, there's no play action here. It's just a regular passing play. Well, then why am I showing this play? Well, because what else kind of coverage were they going to be doing on this play? What is Jacksonville going to be doing? Of course, they're doing cover three zone. How else are you going to stop Derrick Henry? You have to have a bunch of guys in the area to be able to try and make a tackle if you hand off the football so you can game plan accordingly and have a ton of different concepts designed to beat this coverage. As you see, uh, you know, we're going to look over and there's going to be an, op you know, an option to make this throw. Look, the throw is made. They're able to pick up a completion right there. Is it fair to fully credit Henry for that play? Of course not. Quarterback had to make the play. Offensive line had to block. Receiver had to make the catch. All that good stuff. But it's also fair to say that Henry, despite not impacting the play itself at all, had a big impact in the play, which again, how much will it matter for Baltimore? Well, we'll get into it in a second, but let's just stick with Henry for a little bit longer. The other thing he can do is just something like this, which is going to be first kind of a play off of what I was already talking about, where, you know, uh, watch what's going to happen once this play begins. Ryan Tannehill is going to take the snap. He gives the ball to Derrick Henry, who again, initially wanted to run a little bit more towards the left, but it's now going to run more towards the right. Again, does this a lot. He's, you know, fine with being a little bit slower as long as he picks the performance preferred gap to run through. And watch how when he does, he's able to, you know, there was contact at the line, right? There was contact, but he's able to run through it and actually picks up a good amount of yards. So again, he can bring something to the table that a lot of other players can't bring. He can, you know, make guys miss and he can run through contact, which is a huge asset that he still brings to the table. And like I said, these were all plays he had in his most recent game. And these weren't even like the biggest highlights of the most recent game. These were kind of what he was just doing out there in the last time we saw him play. So can he still play? Absolutely, he can still play. Not even a question. He can still play and he can still play at a very high level. But now let's go over to Baltimore because I think you could you could ask the question of is this the best allocation of resources? You know, getting Henry instead of perhaps re-signing Patrick Queen for similar money would have costed a little bit more for uh, Queen and you know, you know more guaranteed. But still, uh, it, it's an option you could have made instead had you wanted to. Is this the best allocation of resources for a team that doesn't need a running back to be successful? Well, let's take the game that we all think about when we're talking about the Ravens struggles last year because. Only struggled one time, and that was against Kansas City. This play early on was a big play. It's a third down and one situation, and watch what's going to happen. 
Lamar Jackson is going to give the ball to Justice Hill, who's going up to the line. There is a Kansas City player who's going to meet him at the line. It's going to kind of be can this Kansas City player make the tackle immediately, or can Hill power forward and pick up the first down? And as you see, Hill is not able to pick up the first down. He gets stopped right away. And you do have to wonder if Henry was there, is he picking up that first down? And you definitely feel pretty confident that it could happen. I also think that similar to how, you know, I made the comparison uh, in my video about this, but I think it's a fair comparison, would be the Christian McCaffrey com comparison. The 49ers went out and they add Christian McCaffrey. And the question was, well, how much better is this actually going to make their running game? Because their running game is already so good, independent of whatever running back they put in. And then he, he's been amazing for them and has taken it to a complete next level. I could see Henry being a similar thing. If it's already a you know elite running game, well, adding an elite running back can make it that much better. He can make safeties miss. If he you know if there is one guy he has to make miss, he can make that happen, and he could turn some of these twenty yard gains that the Ravens already scheme up into seventy yard touchdowns, which is certainly very exciting if you're a Ravens fan. As for the play action, I mean, it's one of those things where you know against Kansas City, it didn't really work. Something like this. It's going to be a play action. You see Odell's route on the screen. Okay, well, let's see what happens. Lamar is going to take the snap. He does run a quick play action, and you see Odell right here is, you know, not open at all. And, and who do you blame for this? Do you say Odell screwed it up? Do you say, well, there wasn't enough threat of the run on this play? Because play action worked a little. Do you just give credit to the Chiefs? Do you give blame to the, you know, uh, Ravens offensive play calling or give credit to the Chiefs offensive play, uh, defensive play calling? Whatever you want to say, it's just an example as you see, Lamar is going to uh, try and scramble, see what he can do there. But, uh, you know, nothing really works out uh, on that one. Not able to get a ton. Again, it's just one of those things where it's like, sure, the Ravens are good at this. And sometimes teams view it, oh, well, if we're good at something, let's fix what we're bad at. But that's not always the best way to view things, I don't think. You know, when Tampa Bay uh, added Tom Brady, they said, oh, well, we have receivers. But they still went out and got Antonio Brown because it's like, well, let's get another receiver. Let's, let's not be one of the best passing teams. Let's be the best passing team. For the Ravens, they're not trying to be just the best running attack in football. They're trying to be even better than that because why not? You're already so great at it. When you're good at running the football, running backs don't matter less. They matter more. When you're good at something, improving upon it adds even more value than it would if you were bad at it. Like if Henry went to a team that had a bad offensive line, he still would be good, right? But like there's usually more value when you have a good running back going to a good offensive line. So I think there's a lot of, definitely a lot of positives here. The one main negative you just have to point out is how good is Henry going to continue to be? Because he did kind of take a little bit of a step back. I think that's fair to say. I don't think it was a massive step back or even like a significant one. But, you know, I don't think he's quite what he once was. And is that, hey, he's still going to be a very good player, though, for the next three, four years? Or is it he's going to fall off a cliff? Because, again, you could have spent that money elsewhere would be the disappointment. But... It's not going to trip you up for a long period of time. You will be able to re-sign, uh, you know, you will be able to get rid of this contract if you don't want to, uh, you know, if you don't like it, you can get rid of it. There's definitely outs there. So it's not like you're stuck with this for forever, but there's certainly maybe more higher upside with this signing than pretty much any other signing they could go up, go with. So even me as not a huge running backs matter guy would still say, I think this is a good trade or a good signing by the Ravens. That's what I think. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.